Today we're talking about emergency science. No time to talk, I gotta run. Combustion is a chemical process. To put fires out successfully, firefighters need to be trained to understand how different types of fire behave. They also need to determine the source of the fire so it can be extinguished safely. Firefighters don't just put out fires, they're also called upon in case of a chemical spill. So I'm here today to find out how science is helping treat this kind of emergency. There are already two vehicles on site. The Scientific Response Unit is home to all kinds of chemical ID equipment. And the Hazardous Materials Response Unit is full of equipment needed to keep us safe while we get the job done. So Bruce, you're a chemist and you've ended up working here at the fire service. So it makes sense that you're here today because we've had word that there's a mysterious chemical spill. What do you do when you show up at a job like this? The first thing we do is we isolate the area to keep people away from it and out away from harm. Uh, then what we'll do is we'll get some equipment ready to test that spill and we'll put on some protective equipment to go towards it so that we can collect a sample and bring that out and then we can identify what that material is and that'll enable us to work out how to clean that up safely. Okay, but before we figure out what it is, what do I need to do? Well, you need to get dressed in some protective equipment. Let's do it. Okay. The outfit of choice for this kind of job is a splash suit. And it takes a bit of help to get one of these on. This suit protects the user from splashes of liquid and solid toxic or corrosive chemicals. We also need a breathing apparatus with oxygen tanks attached in case there are any dangerous gases in the air at the spill site. Meanwhile, decontamination showers are being constructed on site and connected to the closest water main. All right, we're suited and booted and ready to head in. The four gas detector is used to detect flammability, oxygen levels and dangerous gases, carbon monoxide and hydrogen sulphide, which are the four most common hazards. Our second instrument is the photoionisation detector, which detects toxic gases. No toxic gases here, so now it's time for me to collect a sample of the spill. I'm also doing a quick pH test with this colour changing strip. Whatever the spill is, its pH is around 7, which is neutral. And now let's hit the showers. Decontamination showers ensure any potentially dangerous chemicals on our suits are completely washed off. OK, now let's get this suit off. So Bruce, I've got the sample here, but what do we need to do next? Well, we need to run some tests on it to work out what it is. OK, let's do it. A small sample of our mystery chemical around the same amount of nitric acid, stir, then a few drops of this orange solution. Let's see what happens. And it's turned blue, so that tells us that what we collected at the spill must be a type of alcohol. That's correct. OK. To narrow our search down even further, Bruce has a couple more tests for us to do. This machine is an infrared spectrometer that shines infrared light through a diamond surface into our mystery chemical and measures the light that bounces back. We're also placing a vial of our unknown chemical into this Raman spectrometer that measures the light emitted by the chemical when a laser is shone into it. After comparing the results to a library of different chemicals, both of these machines agree. We found a match. The identity of our mystery chemical is a mystery no longer. OK, so we can see from our test that it's ethanol. Now you have to clean it up, though. Thank you so much for showing me how you identify a chemical spill. It's been my pleasure. Phew. If you want to see even more science in an emergency, then check out the full episode. Hurry, it's just there.